It's always good to hear your national anthem when you're on foreign soil. It sends a tingle down your spine, as, especially as you're about to go into full-on, full-frontal collisions against your fellow man from another part of the world. The old anthem gets you going. Out in the middle with the whistle, Timothy Baker, the man from Wellington, been in the army, been in a bank, and now he's a professional referee. Here's the Papua New Guinea side. A lot of unknowns in this side. A lot of huge men. Keep your eyes out for the big man, Bogan Bogan, in the front row. He's a real character. Here's our benches for today. They're going to need those benches. It's quite humid out there. Not sure which team will be preferring these conditions. One thing for sure, though, neither of these sides really enjoys the artificial turf. They'd prefer a good old bit of paspalum and some chlorophyll. But the scene is set. 80 minutes ahead to decide who takes third spot in the Regal Hotel's Cup of Nations for 2016. Let's hope for some fireworks. It's going to be Lenience Tamweda to get us started. The fullback from Zimbabwe. He's off the trusty left boot. Up she goes, and here we go. We're underway, and Papua New Guinea sort of stand around, and finally someone calls for it. And they try to bring it out from the 22 now. That's the scrum half, Jonah Kualtu. Each team will probably try and stress test the opposition's defence around the fringes just to get things going. And that's been early steal there for Zimbabwe. Pilford at that breakdown. That's a sloppy old pass straight off the bat from scrum half, Tedious Zandwendera. But they're on the 10 metre. They've still got the ball. It's hot potato. Frantic start from both sides. Interesting to see who's going to get some early ascendancy here. There's one of the huge men there, Lock Witness Manzira, number five. He's a huge figure of a man. And finally, after a scrappy note, we're still away. It's a quick one. Papua New Guinea showing their hand very early. Good positioning. Puts on a bit of footwork, a bit of gas, kicks it through. Under it is Susuve. Ah, and he throws the intercept, pops it into the hands of Chutakwindo. And Papua New Guinea again, keeping that in field. And number eight, Jolovu, has knocked that on. And it's all over the place. I don't think I've seen a start to an international rugby match like that before, Grant Kemp. Grant, absolutely frantic stuff. Uh, we saw it in the first game, Papua New Guinea against Hong Kong. Uh, ball retention, you know, always a factor. The guys like to play it loose. But then a great counter-attacking option from the Zimbabwean fullback. We just see him, unfortunately, the number eight knocking the ball on. But Grant, here's the first scrum. Interesting times. Both sides, I don't think, enjoy scrummaging, especially on, as you said, this artificial turf. But we'll see how it goes. Right on the halfway, I can see you salivating, Kempi. First scrum of the match. You dream about it all week. And it's a passive connection right on halfway. No side looking to get a shove going there. Happy just to hold the status quo into the line. Comes fullback Kwatu, the skipper, up to the 10. That's a good run from the skipper. That's going to cheer up his front eight who secured the ball. Now the big man get the legs pumping. Number eight, Hokey. He's still going. Gives it to Ephraim. It's Kenny, sorry. Making their way just five metres out now. This is a good passage from Papua New Guinea. But it looks like Zimbabwe have got in there and stolen it. And the man with two different coloured boots there. Lawrence Tumwera keeps it in. Third kick in a row. Staying in field. And Papua New Guinea are all arms and legs at the moment. And that's just too far in front of James Lumerus. But uh, looking quite dangerous, these Papua New Guineans. Yes, Grant. Lumerous there, unfortunately, knocking it on. But as we can see, we can see how Papua New Guinea are looking to play. Throwing it two lineouts in quick. This is going to be the first setup lineout. Oh, we're going to scrum here. Lumerous knocking that on. 
But as we can see, Papua New Guinea more than keen to keep the ball in hand, keep it alive. Um, second scrum, Grant, as you said in the first, very passive. No one looking to really get an ascendancy. But I suspect we're going to see Zimbabwe clear here from their 22. That's Tedious Zandewandera, or Teddy, the man they call Teddy. And apparently it's okay if I call him Teddy, so I'm going to call him Teddy. Teddy clears it to Titch. That's Chifara Makwana, and it's risky stuff right under their posts, and now they come out from the 22, the show and the go from winger. That was Rian O'Neill, the inside centre. Good purposeful running there from the young man. Now Zimbabwe, after a crazy start, here goes O'Neill again. Gets it up to the halfway now. Teddy fishes it out. And there's one right around the shoulders, and Tim Baker keeps his arm down, says, play on. Uh, good turnover work by Papua New Guinea. If nothing else, we're in for an entertaining match by the look of things. It's Papua New Guinea now. Making some good inroads straight down channel one. The arm's still out. And so offside twice in a row there. Tim Baker has penalised the Zimbabweans right on the 10 metre mark. And they're going to have a shot. And finally, a little bit of calm might descend over these 30 players. They're keen to impress. Oh, it is frantic, frantic stuff, Grant. We saw there Rion O'Neill, two great breaks, making around 20 metres with his two runs. And Grant, I'm telling you, today is going to be the day that you're going to need someone to take the ball forward. And it looks like O'Neill's going to do that for Zimbabwe. But on the side of Papua New Guinea, number eight, George Hokey, he's had two incredible runs. We see him get that big fend off. But now we're about to see number 15, Tisa Kautu, who's in fact the captain. Uh, looks like he's going to hit it with the left boot here. Got a breeze at his back. Distance won't be a problem. And he's looked like he's trying to put that into the sports bar. And that's straight down the middle. And an early 3-0 lead to Papua New Guinea. They've had probably the slight measure over Zimbabwe in these early exchanges. And I'll tell you what else concerns me, Grant Kemp, is can these players last 80 minutes at this rate in this heat? Oh, Grant, as someone who's played rugby in Hong Kong, you're looking at 40 minutes of, if, of the frantic stuff. It's just going to take someone to calm it down, and then we should see the game get into a bit of a flow. Tumwera, with his second restart, gets it up nice and high with a pitching wedge under that one, and this time is someone on it. Yes, nice clear call. Is it the eight hokey? And been stolen again. That's the third or fourth turnover we've seen with the ball off the ground. And now Zimbabwe is an attacking ball. Bounces into the hands of Stanis Susuvi. He's struggling to get the ball back. O'Neill's over the top, appealing to the ref. And a good, safe clearance from Papua New Guinea, but it's just staying in field. Teddy goes back. He's got his right winger with him. Taffy to Tokwindo. Puts it too deep, though. There's no pressure on that. There's no defensive line coming up. He chased his own kick, but the rest of them are holding back. Maybe just feeling the effects of this blistering pace already. Look at this down the far side, Papua New Guinea. He's all arms and elbows and knees, and he gets up over the 10 metre. And Zimbabwe look like they might have lost their feet there. And he's just stuck there in an uncompromising position. This is Katal, the big blockbusting number 12. He's taken good and around the legs tackle. This is Kent, John Kent. Midfielders combining. It's all over the place, and here is this huge man, Bogan Bogan. How do they get him down? It's got to be 130 kilos at least. It's another turnover, though. Zimbabwe, they might look to chip here. There's no one back. Fullback struggling to get across, and that was just a little bit too high. And plucking it out of the air, Stephen Hunduza. He might have been away down the side. Inter interesting. Interesting eight minutes of play. 
we saw that steal there from Chamala, the flanker from Zimbabwe. We saw Tim Baker have a uh, tell him hands out, hands out, but luckily he was the first man. So that was a great steal. And then just unfortunately, again, Grant, we see just a knock on. Uh, knock on into touch. It looks like they are going to choose the scrum. And as you said, Big Bogan Bogan will be looking to get that left shoulder up of the Papua New Guinea scrum. We've got a great view of it here. It's a front rower's delight. Strap yourselves in on the five metre. Kautu feeds it. This time Zim put a little bit of a shove on, but easily held by Papua New Guinea. Good dummy run there from Kent and trying to perform some hocus pocus in the midfield. Hasn't worked this time and fleet footed Taffy Chickawin. Chickadwindo is on the 10 metre with it. Let's look at the leg drive from the massive reserve Kazembe. He's on for someone. Flying down now comes Delovu. Can he put him away? Gets the leg drive going. He shrugs him off and gets the first try of the match. What leg power from this big man. Number eight, Jabulo Delovu. And their first real chance inside the red zone. And he finishes it off on his own. Batters about three Papua New Guineans aside. Wow. Incredible scenes, Grant. Ndlovu there, that leg drive. There we see the man on the screen. Incredible leg drive. The, 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 the Papua New Guinea players trying to get around the legs. The hips are too strong. As you said, the leg drive is incredible. Ndlovu goes over for the first five-pointer of the match. But once again, we see it from a turnover in the midfield. A knock-on. Great fleet-footed running in the midfield. Ndlovu takes it on the left side. We didn't think he would make it. Three players on him. Not a problem. The big man goes under... Uh, in the left-hand side. And now we see again the number 15 with the left boot as well. Uh, he'll be kicking slightly into the wind, which will be interesting to see. It's it. It's fading, and it's just to the right. A good effort there. It's a great run as well from the big number 20, Kazembe, who seems to be on the field, not sure who for, in 20. He is a big man. So Papua New Guinea now just amble their way back to halfway. The sun is out in full force. The heat, probably not a problem for either of these sides. The humidity, perhaps a different story. So 5-3. An entertaining opening salvo here. If they can carry on like this, there'll be some ambulances turning up at the end of this match. Jonah Kautu gets us underway. He gets slammed to the ground by the chasing players. Is half at least half the packer in there for PNG? Zimbabwe not committing more than a couple of players and here goes another one of their big front rankers bobbles on the floor but no knock on there's men lining up out here this is Kent, Kent puts on the fend on O'Neill, O'Neill drags him down just a couple of metres short Zimbabwe scurrying back and again Zimbabwe have got in there and made nuisances of themselves but they've given away a penalty this time good strong run from John Kent this time and what are they going to do here? They're not content with... Oh, he throws out a big wobbly one. This is Hokey. Look at Hokey go. They go too high on him. The big number eight. Can he finish it? These two huge number eights having a big impact on this game. Hands might do it. The big lofty floated plus. And that is absolute magic from Papua New Guinea. James Lumerus finishes it off. Two fantastic phases there. First down the right side. They spread it wide. And they've got the skills to finish it. They strike back with a try of their own. Lumerus goes into the corner, Grant. But George Hokey, we have to say, that try is his try. Um, we're going to see George Hokey up against the big Ndlova from Zimbabwe. It seems that's going to be the matchup today. 
But Lumerus, great finish, great skip ball from the midfield out to the wing. And really, it's just a trot in. But once again, George Hokey, what a run. Straight into the midfield, two quick passes, one over the top, and he's in for a trot in. 13 minutes gone. 8-5 to Papua New Guinea with the kick to come. This is going to be a tough one from the left-hand side, especially being a left-footer. Papua New Guinea have only played 27 test matches in the last 10 years. They struggle to get matches at a win rate of 60% as the conversion is on its way. And it's not a bad effort, but across the face. So it stays 8 points to 5. As Tim Baker probably telling the players to slow it down. <laughs> he enjoying himself out there. 8-5. Two try, one try apiece. Off we go again through Linians Tambuera. Oh, the man they call LT puts it a good distance, but a couple of metres too far from being contestable. And PNG, a little fumble in there. And so it'll be an attacking scrum about 25 metres from the line. Third, fourth scrum of the game. And let's see if Zimbabwe try and get a bit of a shove on here. There's been no fireworks yet in these front rows. That man in picture there, we saw John Kent, number 13, Papua New Guinea, Grant, already stamping his authority on the game. Him against Rian, Rian O'Neill in the Zimbabwe backline is going to be one to look out for. Bit of a shove comes in from the PNG. It turns a bit, makes it untidy for Teddy. Off the back comes try scorer Dlovo. Gets a bit of valuable go forward, still behind the gain line. Here come the backs now. Here comes O'Neill. Ball in two hands. Showing and going. On the inside is Titch Makwanwa. Skipper Denford Mutangamira takes it back into the traffic. Looks for the forwards. Papua New Guinea defence is fanned out. There's no space across there. There's a lot of Papua New Guinea forwards walking at this moment. Here goes the big replacement. He gets him up by the leg. Does the hook Akura. Drops him like a big tree. Makamuri. Out wide. Hunduza. Back inside to Rian O'Neill. PNG defence is holding up at the moment. Will it crack? Zimbabwe keep coming at them. O'Neill fishes it out. Show and go. They were waiting for him. And Tim Baker was playing some advantage there. So he brings it back. It was number six, flanker Alapema Kenny offside. So what will they do here? Grant, test match, and they're I, going for the points. I tell you, both teams looking absolutely fantastic going forward. It's going to come down to the, de the defence. Uh, Papua New Guinea giving away a three uh, penalty could result in three points, but it's not a, the end of the world, in fact. Last time Zimbabwe were in the 22-meter line, it resulted in a seven-pointer. Once again, we're going to see the left-footed kicker into the wind. Slight breeze against him. Breeze seems to have died down momentarily. So can he get his left to right fade working? Lenience Tumbuera. Strikes it beautifully and that's gone through the middle. Well, not through the middle, but just to the left right hand side of the left hand upright. So 
Zimbabwe come back. And they level it up at eight points apiece. Probably a fair score at this stage. Both teams enjoying the fast conditions here. With only 18 minutes gone, there are some big boys walking, especially on the PNG side, and that's going to be the telling factor, I think. Jonah Kautu gets under it nice. It's in the eyes. The sun's in the eyes of the Zimbabwe catchers. They do well to take that. Coming through is Troy Tamu, tight head prop. But he can't stop them getting the ball back. And look at this down the far side. Back goes fullback Tisa Kautu, and he's picked that up nicely. Drives it down low off his left boot and through the legs. And what a kick <laughs> under a huge amount of pressure. They've taken it quickly, Zimbabwe. And eventually deciding to kick, maybe not the best option. It's not the best kick either. It's gone up too high. Players having to get out of the circle. Knock on there as Jonah Kautu tried to take that one on the halfway. So a little bit messy, but Zimbabwe, for the first time, just looked a little bit aimless with that kick when they, after taking the quick line out. As you said, Grant, the frantic start is definitely catching up to the players. We see the ball gets up in the air and it looks like someone's pushed pause. The boys are walking so slowly. We're into about our eighth or ninth scrum. The front rows will, starting to be, will start blowing soon. In it goes from Titch. Teddy. Teddy goes straight through the middle. Look at this from the number nine. He gets it back. It's a knock on by the PNG defender. He's been dragged to about seven, eight metres out now. Here is the big man, Delovu. One try already. Ah, and it's just popped out in the hands of PNG. Oh, beautiful hands off his boot laces. Now it's a bit scrappy. <laughs> Most teams in the world would have just kicked the hell out of that and tried to get out of town, but not Papua New Guinea. They didn't travel all this way to kick the ball about. They probably got an ethos of run at all costs, much to the dismay of some of their big men who <laughs> must look up from the occasional breakdown. What's going on here? But anyway, it'll be another attacking scrum for Zimbabwe, straight out in front of the posts. Big blind side to work with here. And on that far side, Stephen, sorry, no, it's Taffy Ch Chitokwindo. He's got some real electric pace. If he gets it one-on-one, -on -one, Could see a new land speed record. This time Zimbabwe going for the push. Perhaps looking for a penalty. Yes, the arm is out. Now they can try and put it down the blind and get themselves five instead of three. Here goes Teddy. And he does. He puts them away. Just as we thought. Taffy Chitakwindo taking full advantage of that big scrum there from Zimbabwe. And in the end, he gets a relatively easy run in for Zimbabwe's second try. Oh, Grant, the classic 8 9 15. Big Brian Makamure, the tight head prop from Zimbabwe, will be, will be celebrating that one. We see Teddy take it down the blind side, one pass inside, outside, and he's put it in the corner. First try of the tournament for Chitakwindo. He's had a couple of good runs already. He was just finishing that one off. But how about the break from Teddy down the middle there from the scrum on halfway? Just split through the midfield, made 40 metres. He's a live wire. Grant, and as you say, when the scrum's going back, the back row's got to stay on the scrum, which gives space to people like Teddy. An incredible break. There's definitely a, a rugby league sort of uh, influence on the Papua New Guinea side. It's that run at all costs sort of attitude. Not much kicking, more ball in hand. This time, perhaps on his preferred side, but Tamweda can't bring it round. 
this time. So it stays 13 points to eight. 23 minutes gone. Three very entertaining tries. And I'm sure the neutrals watching this, and there are a lot of neutrals here at the ground, are thoroughly enjoying this open rugby from these two sides. This time, Kautu looks like he's got his forwards out to the right and he's fooled everybody. But it's played off as John Kent goes up and wins that. And now the forwards might see it as it comes their way. This is Eager, Culver Eager, the replacement. He's on early. This is the big blindside flanker, Kenny. Gives it up to his rangy lock, Ephraim. It's on the ground. Straightening up goes Kura, the big man. And he gets taken by Denford. Keller guy straight through the middle. Oh, and how about that? But the whistle's gone. I think it was a forward pass, was it? The assistant referee has helped Timothy Baker here with a call. Not sure exactly what for, but... Papua New Guinea, when they get the ball in hand, explosive runners. Yeah, there's a bit of a conflab taking place. Did you see anything, Grant? Um, I just saw the number five from Zimbabwe, um, witness Mandiza. He was lying injured, and I saw Patrick Kwok go straight onto his microphone, having a word in Tim Baker's ear. We see them having a small conference now. Looks like we're going to see a word. Hopefully not uh, any cards. As the game has been awesome so far. It's 14. Stannis Sasuvi, the winger that's been called over. And it's a yellow. Not really sure what for. But he's going to have 10 minutes rest on the naughty chair. There are other naughty chairs. So, looks like it's a tip tackle, Grant. That's what Tim Baker's saying. Taking a player through the 90 degrees. Should you drive the player to the ground, you're seeing red, but it seems like he's just taken him to the ground unsafely, which sees him spend 10 minutes on the sideline. So, a line out. 15 metres inside the PNG half. One man up for 10 minutes. Can they ram home the advantage? Taking it at the back was B. Chamala. They look to get a drive on now. Put a bit of structure on. PNG driver to the ground. They've sacked that maul. Baker's got the arm out. They're way behind the gain line. And the line speed from the PNG backs there was very good. But there was an early, earlier discretion there. Number four, Lewis Modudula from the side. So, wasting no time is Titch Makwanya. Makwanya draws it down to within about 12 metres of the PNG line. An easily kickable penalty within the range anyway of Tambueta, but they decide... They've got their heads up. They've got momentum. They try to set up another maul. They head off. They set their sights for the try line. Papua New Guinea trying to come in from the side. Can they keep it together? It's a bit of a pig's dinner now. It's on the floor. And PNG coming in over the top again illegally. And Tim Baker's getting annoyed. PNG won't want him to be reaching to the pocket a second time. That four-man line-out that Zimbabwe are doing, Grant, is absolutely incredible. There's just absolutely no competing at the back. They're going up in the front. The hooker, Tolerant Zisha, is, is allowed to throw it as low as he wants to. There's just absolutely no competing. And it seems like we're going to see it again. It's been drilled to the corner again by Makwanya. 
They're just putting the foot on the throat here. They want to come away with another big five-pointer. So, again, they've gone for a six-man. Denford at scrum half. He goes in, looks for the ball, does Denford. They've got it up quite high. Now they look to drive it. It's all over the place. And it's not organised enough to make it to the line. Coming in and off the blind wing is Hunduza. Gets caught in midfield. The kick pass from Titch. That's a beauty. Straight into the hands of Chitaquindo. And he's out in the far corner. Exciting stuff from Titch Makwanya, the fly half. Very nearly a second try there to Chitaquindo. Grant, we see John John Kent, way off his, out of position, going to help out his fellow winger. It's great work from John Kent to ultimately try saving tackle in the corner. We see Papua New Guinea try to go with the quick line out. They've been called back. And this is where we saw them struggle last week against Hong Kong. Set piece. So they'll be under pressure here. Hopefully I'd worked very hard on it in the week. Just five metres from their own line, and it's been knocked forward into the hands of Zimbabwe. But knocked on by Zimbabwe, luckily for PNG. It can be very hard to get out of that corner. And there's that set piece letting them down again, Grant. On your five metre line, the last thing you want to be doing is losing front ball line out. And luckily for them, it's a scrum as opposed to a five pointer for Zimbabwe. The sun has gone behind the clouds momentarily. Some brief respite for these players. You can see it on their faces, the anguish and the sweat. They're still 11 minutes away from a break. And looks like Zimbabwe bracing themselves for a bit of offensive pushing here. Yep, and they do. But Papua New Guinea holding solid. Goes out the side. Teddy, ever alert Teddy, scoots in and gets it, but... What happened there, Kempi? Well, we just see the ball come out of the tunnel. Tim Baker's going to reset. But Grant, playing with fire here in their own five meter, we need to sort out the set piece and clear the ball. I see, we can see John Kent at the back there, along with Richard Atisi. One of them's going to clear it here, I'm assuming. They don't look like they're ready to run at all. First and foremost, the scrum needs to hold up. Here it comes. And it goes from Kral to... Yes, that's nicely done. That's in the eyes. Ah, and will they get the bounce? Yes, they do. Straight into the hands of Iga. There are still players getting out of the scrum, but here comes the big man, number six, Kenny. This is John Kent. He looks instrumental in everything. There's Culver Eager who got through and made that early tackle. They're into the Zimbabwe in half now. Zimbabwe back line is a little bit crooked like a dog hind's leg. <laughs> Look at the knees up high. Kent goes in and tries to keep O'Neill out from pilfering that ball. Kenny the skipper over the top. His eyes up. Seeing what's going on. The big man eventually arrive. That's Hokey at the back there. There's Bogan, Bogan, but he's gone in too high, and that's good defence from Zimbabwe. The crowd gets up every time he gets the ball. Such an athlete. Cheeky toe poke through this time from Jonah Kautu, and he's, there's no one chasing it. There's some tired boys down there. Kent goes back. It's a wobbly one. Looks like it's going to wobble all the way there, but... I think 10 minutes might be too long for some of these PNG players, Grant. Fantastic kick there. Lenience, they call him LT. He's gone from the left-hand side on the left boot and he's pulled it straight across. Great kicking style. He's rolled it into the 10-meter line of Papua New Guinea. But as you say, Grant, Bogan, Bogan, a few of the big boys starting to feel the heat of Hong Kong right now. Especially when he's doing as, as much carrying as you said. Let's see if this um, Papua New Guinea lineup can hold up. It's 
That's a shocker. Denford's got it. Steaming onto it comes Kazembe. A good platform here in midfield for Zimbabwe. Titch puts on a wide one to O'Neill. Into the line comes Tim Wera. And he's fumbled that. Made a mess of it. And I love the footwork from this fella. The big number four, Lewis Modadula. He gets the legs going. Gets the goose going. And that again, probably the sun causing some trouble here for Zimbabwe, but they got plenty of numbers behind the ball. Oh, and he gets hit late after he fumbled it from Keller Guy. That was a bone rattler. Here goes Kent. Can he get the bounce? Yes, he does. Rian O'Neill comes across and collars him, but back on halfway, I think the ball was out. Patrick Cock with his flag up. Some big collisions there. Oh, we saw Teddy take an incredible hit there. Fumbled it, was looking back and got absolutely blindsided. Zimbabwe won't want that. Teddy being one of their top players of the day so far. And look how quick Bogan Bogan got to the scrum. He's found a bit of extra juice to see him through the second half, the sec last few minutes of this first half. PNG backs are relatively deep. Bogan Bogan just struggling to get down on that loose head side. Big shove comes on from Zimbabwe. Kotu gets it away. Bit high for Atsi. Haven't seen much of this man, Jediah Katal, number 12. Straight through the middle comes Lamaris, but there was a fumble there at the breakdown. He was under the posts. Papua New Guinea will want to sort out the set piece here, Grant. Uh, we've seen two, three lineups from Papua New Guinea, three losses, and now we're just seeing the scrum starting to take a whole lot of pressure. Bogan, Bogan, and, the, and David Kura, the hooker, they'll be having a chat in seven minutes' time in the sheds. Discussing it is what they can do. Just five metres inside the PNG half. Six minutes remaining. Zim lead 13 points to eight. And that scrum is also a mess. Teddy goes quick. Scoots down the far side. Looming outside him was Hunduza again, but he couldn't take it. And there's been a few too many knock-ons from Zimbabwe at vital moments. Teddy looking absolutely incredible so far. So far, himself, O'Neill and Hokey will be looking at man of the match should the second half go anything like the first. Been taken quickly and it's a good nudge down just inside the Zimbabwe half as the winger Stanis Susuvi serves his 10 minutes he's back on the field PNG back to 15 players no points scored so no harm done we see Zimbabwe defending with three at the back here Grant we haven't seen much kicking from Papua New Guinea, so I don't know if they're expecting an up and under. Denford takes it at the back. It's a sloppy one from PNG, just giving the ball away on their own feed. And it will be another scrum starting to fall to bits a little bit as the tiredness sets in. I think you don't know what to expect from this side, though, Kempi. You're right, they haven't kicked it too much. They kicked it a few times early on and couldn't find touch. Uh, two or three raking kicks downfield that probably kept Zimbabwe on their toes. But, yeah, who knows what they're going to do next. Just inside PNG half now. 
That scrum is going backwards. The big man of PNG put a push on. But Dolovu manages to get it under control. And now they come scorching down that far side. Fullback Tamwera decides to put it to toe. And that's a good chase through from Flanka Chamwala. And it's popped up into the hands for try number two to Hinduza. No, it's a knock on. Holy smokes. I thought he'd got away there. And it was a very good chase through from B. Chamala. Grant, this will be the scrum of the game. We've got three minutes to go. Papua New Guinea on their own five meter line again. This will be a very, very important set piece to clear from. They've got a little spice, a little space on their blind side if they want to try something tricky because the Hunduza is way back 40 metres defending the kick. So they've only got the scrum half defending and there's a couple of players coming across now but common no risks this time as Kent sticks it downtown and bounces between the fullback and the winger. Tim Wera gets it on the bounce and Duzu comes around. He goes crabbing across the stadium. This is Nduzu, sorry. Here's a kneel. And a big shoulder comes in from Qatar. Collects him big time. And Baker doesn't like it. Off goes Hunduza. It's all action now. Here goes Teddy. Steps out of one. Still there. Andrew Rose picks it up. Secures it. Takes it a metre. Teddy to Titch. Ah, oh, straight through the legs of Tamwera. And streaming through comes Kautu. Nails him in a great tackle. Scoops the ball up. What a piece of work from the scrum half. And it's broken play. And there's players all over the place. Alepi McKinney takes it forward. This is the fly half, Richard Aitsi. And Zimbabwe defence has reorganised itself. Here goes Bogan Bogan. He's left it behind, but it went backwards. And some more of that frantic stuff. As James Lamaris gets collared by three Zimbabweans. Three of the Sables all over him. As the puck pucks try to get away. It's been knocked down. Surely knocked down. Yep. Baker's got that one. Knocked down by fly half. Titch Maki Wanya. Oh, Grant, the whistle couldn't come soon enough. There are players strewn all over the field. What a passage of play. And what great work from the number nine from Papua New Guinea. But I can tell you there are hands on heads out there. The water's on. The medics are on. Both sets of medics are on now. We have 45 seconds to go. There's two more medics coming on. Inc incredible scenes as we come to the end of about three minutes of play. These fellas will have lost three or four kilos in this first half, some of them, surely. Andrew Rose there we see going through a bottle of water. He's been very good on the ground today. Not very flashy, but all over the ball. Interesting to see what impact the bench from both these sides will have in the second half. Surely they're going to get most of the second half, if not all of it. There's no point bringing these guys on with 10 to go. Fresh legs are going to be crucial. One more scrum, perhaps, as the clock ticks around to 40 minutes. PNG backs look menacing. They look like they've got something cocking out there. This time it was John Kent that's fumbled the ball and gives it back to Zim with one last chance right on half time. Titch gets, a, gets taken under the leg and that could have been dangerous. Finished up all right and there's a bit of confusion there as Rose clashes with Mendeza. They'd love to take a bigger margin 
into the sheds, but finally it concludes. And they've taken it quickly. It's insanity by Papua New Guinea. They just love running with the ball. Off the foot, says Baker, but I think a second knock on there, second attempt did go forward. And that is half time. What a 40 minutes of rugby. Zimbabwe 13, Papua New Guinea 8. It's two tries to one. Both sides still in this. Join us for the second half. Have these teams got the steam to see out this match and take the bronze in the Regal Hotels Cup of Nations here at Hong Kong Football Club.
Club in the heart of the city, Causeway Bay of Hong Kong. Uh, especially warm welcome to the viewers in Papua New Guinea in Zimbabwe. 80, 40 minutes to go here in this bronze medal match as Papua New Guinea get us underway. They are trailing 13 points to 8 against Zimbabwe. Both teams struggling with the heat and the blistering pace of that first half. They have 40 minutes left and either side could take this out and take third spot in this edition of the Regal Hotels Cup of Nations. Both these teams having a rough week. Zimbabwe just losing to Russia 19-15. Then they lost to Hong Kong 34-11. No contest at the front there. So straight through comes Zimbabwe. They'll want to put some daylight between them and Papua New Guinea. Here goes the big man. Delovu. One try in the first half. And that's good. Well executed exit by Zimbabwe. Straight from the kickoff. Grant Kemp. That's incredible rugby, that Grant. We see the set piece holds up to the big man in Dlovo. He's had a huge first half, try scorer already. We should see more of Ndlovo in the second half. And I'm not too sure who it was, but rolls in a stabbing kick. And here we have Papua New Guinea just outside their 22, about to show off their set piece. Hopefully things have improved for them in that department. There would have been lots of talk in the shed. And... Straight for Denford at the back. That's the second time he's taken one off the PNG line out at the back. The skipper sets up a tidy platform now. About eight metres inside Papua New Guinea, 22. And they throw themselves at this now. This is Makamuri, tight head prop. They might have been told to tighten things up a bit by the looks of it. Coming through the middle is Denford. Chamala trying to get his hands on the ball. And they're queuing up for this. We haven't seen three or four phases like this in the whole game from either side. Maybe the word has been sent down to Zimbabwe. Put a bit of structure back in. But it breaks down. It'll be an early penalty to Zimbabwe. And might they just want to put a three-point buffer on PNG here? You have got it right, Grant. If I was the coach of Zimbabwe, I would telling the, the guys to slow it down a bit. You've called it. Tim Baker points to the post. Slow it down. Keep it structured. Rely on that strong set piece that we've seen today. <clears throat> this should take them eight points ahead, which is two scores. They've signaled for goal. We just see a bit of confusion as the tee comes on. Or poles, as they say, from your part of the world. Yes, we call it poles. What do you call it in New Zealand? Have a shot, mate. Have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lenience Tamweda with another stab with the left foot. No problem straight out in front. 16 points to eight now, three minutes into the second half. You can see players from PNG like Bogan Bogan, the biggest man on the field. Players like him, they've had some impact, but how long can they go? And when do they roll the bench here? Looks like an injury for Zimbabwe. Hopping from the field. I think that's Kazembe. And... I was going to say, I thought it was in Glover for one moment. So... Another big man. Look, that looks like the, he's done the right knee there, Grant. Irvine Ndua comes on. Could have been a jersey swap here. Could be Connor Pritchard. We've got the numbers mixed up on our team list. Please forgive us. Beautifully taken by Chamwala. Up to the halfway now. Zimbabwe with the momentum. This is Rose. Gets to the halfway. Zimbabwe's forwards going in there with more purpose. Good cleaning out. Titch to O'Neill. That's gone forward. And that'll come back there. All been done a little bit behind the gain line there. No one really running forward onto the ball. 
you've called it Grant. We just need someone to straighten there. So Neil's going across the field. His outside center is going across the field, and there we see the little fumble. But in all fairness, that's the first mistake O'Neill's made all day. He's been instrumental getting the Zimbabwean backline moving forward. He has been good. And earlier results also for PNG. Last Friday night, they went down to Hong Kong 51-5 as... Here comes Bogan Bogan, the big man. He's done well for 45 minutes in this heat of Hong Kong. He's absolutely powered his way to the sideline. And PNG also losing to Russia 49-19, managing to get themselves three tries in that match against the Russians. And you may ask, why did Hong Kong invite Papua New Guinea to this Cup of Nations event? And I'll tell you the answer in a moment. Jonah Kautu gets it in. That's a rock-solid scrum from both sides. A good platform, but it's a mess. Teddy gets on it. Pritchard, the replacement. He's got players all over him trying to rip the ball from him. He's not having it. He's fresh. Now the kick over the top. There's no one home. Over the shoulder of Iga. And somehow or other, that's going to bounce all the way down to the dead ball area. You don't often see that on these artificial pitches. Get a kick and a roll. Very seldomly, but there we saw it. Turned an average kick into a poor kick. Here we go quickly. Jonah Kautu puts in a big drop out. Reaches the halfway. Jamala takes it to ground. Here comes Pritchard. Zimbabwe got some good shape so far in the second half. This is Nlovu. Right on the 22. Patiently working their way into the 22. Here's Rose. Spins out of that one. Skipper Denford gets over the top. Helps him out. Pritchard. Three carries in this movement. PNG defence for now is holding up and there's some aggressive counter rucking there. Titch to O'Neill. They're running out of space though. The hooker Kura rides him to the ground. And this is good defence from PNG, but they're slightly offside. Denford, the skipper, says, I'm going to go quickly here, boys. We need more tries. We don't need kicks at goal. They can sense if they can just hold it for a few phases that they'll work their way over the try line. They're getting close now. And it's been stolen right on the try line. What an amazing piece of play. Not sure who that was, but that was a try saver. Elipima Kina gets in a kick with no angle at all and does very well to pick up 25 metres there. How did they not score there? It's great defence from Papua New Guinea. We've seen them on attack looking sharp, Grant, and it's great to see that they're defending with the same sort of intensity. Zimbabwe taking the ball through the phases, but that man Pritchard, he's come off the bench, he's making a huge impact, and hopefully he can hold that down for the next 20 or so minutes. Rose goes up, secures it, they form a wedge, they drive now, they've got good shape. This is going to be hard to stop. Papua New Guinea coming from all sides. There's two pods now. It's in the second pod and well read by the PNGers. An inch here and an inch there and not so much about the territory but just wearing down this PNG pack now. If they can get some ascendancy here in the final 30 minutes, the floodgates could open. Interestingly, we see Zimbabwe with the pick and go game. In the opposition, 22, keeping the ball tight, Grant, keeping it safe, playing for that penalty, and we've seen their mall be very successful. Hopefully it's not a commentator's curse. They're going to have a line out around 10 metres out here. Denford, the skipper, deciding that's enough. We're going for the corner, going for the seven-pointer. Here we go then, about seven, eight metres out from the PNG line. Can this defence hold? Up goes Mandiza. 
Secures the ball, comes to ground. They form, but it's on the ground. And maybe just go into ground there instead of keeping their feet. Here goes Titch, cross field. Rian O'Neill comes back on the jink. Connor Pritchard just battling for those couple of inches. They get underneath them, pick him up, take him for a ride. Teddy now decides to go back. They're lining up, and that's come off the tight head prop, Brian McAmurray, and it breaks down there, and you've got to give it to this PNG defence. They are defending like madmen in front of the sportsman's bar there, entertaining the crowd down that far end. That was much better from O'Neill there, straightening the line. It's a great clear out. Teddy picks up the ball. And unfortunately, Grant, your loose head prop and your tight head prop, not really the men you want to be snapping to on the blind side. But Denford's the captain. He makes the decisions, and he decided, I'm taking this ball. Just unfortunately, him and his other prop knocking it on. PNG just struggling now to get out of their 22. And that's going to land in the hands of Tim Wera. He's positioned himself well. Goes for the little chip. Can he get the bounce? Pops up into the arms of J. Day Garrison, who's on the field. And look at all those players out there having a conflab from that last, that last set piece, just sauntering around. And the arm goes out. All eight tight forwards over, all eight forwards over there, just meandering around like Brown's cows. Hinduza puts on some footwork, gets the legs working, and good. Classic textbook tackle from scrummer Richard Aitsey, and the ball spills forward under the tackle and the tiredness and. Perhaps some of the perspiration on the ball. That will definitely be playing a factor, Grant. Some boy will be putting on the pressure here, Papua New Guinea, in the 22-meter line. We've been here for about five minutes, I would say. Tim Baker looked like it's time for a chat. Too many penalties in what they call the red zone. That is around 10 to 15 meters out from the opposition goal line. Should it continue, we may see our second yellow card. So far, a very disciplined game, played in the right spirit. There hasn't been any off-the-ball sort of stuff. Just a one yellow card, mistimed tackle. And here we see them going for the three-pointer to make it 19-8 after 52 minutes. Zimbabwe making a substitution as... Lenience Tim Werda lines this one up from straight out in front. Shouldn't trouble the man to take an 11-point buffer into this final 27 minutes. Brian Makamure has just come off the field for Zimbabwe. He can be very happy with his game. The tight head prop Zimbabwe. Kicks over. So 19 points to 8. Zimbabwe starting to ring the changes now. So far we saw Pritchard. He's made a huge impact since he's come on. A few substitutions been made by Papua New Guinea as well. On comes Christopher Namani. And that's a good restart. That's on the money. Who's got the will to get up and win that? Kent can't quite get up. Here's a new man on the field. Witness Mendeza. Just struggling with the numbers and names of some of these substitutes. Working off the old songbook. And here's a good break from Stefan Hunduza. He's going for try number two. Good footwork. Can they get him in the corner? Whoa. Kent looks like he's had a crack at him, but Tim Baker's on hand. 
And he awards the try. And what a solo effort there after a run from the big man, Witness Mendeza. He's over in the corner. The tide has turned on this match. Stephen Anduza, the fend. He's obviously been watching Corey Jane play, Grant, because that fend put the other man about five metres back. It looks like he's done himself an injury in the process. Let's hope he's all right, because that was a fantastic solo effort. Five-pointer in the corner, 24-8 after 54 minutes. And a yellow card to boot for the late tackle there. Not the tackle from Kent, I think, but there has been a yellow card issued by Mr. Baker. And with his superior fitness, Tim Baker was there on the spot. He beat test 19.3. As good or better than probably all these players. That's sevens player fitness. He's on the, on the naughty chair is Lewis Modadula, the big lock. So he gets 10 minutes. Extremely tough ground to be playing in this heat with 14 men. You have to put in around 8% extra effort to make up for the man that's off the pitch. For those of you who thought prop forwards couldn't do mathematics, Grant Kemp with the stats there for you. So out of the 80 minutes, we're looking at Papua New Guinea playing 20 of those minutes with only 14 players. You do the maths. Oh, I'm going to leave that one to you, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> the conversion has missed from out wide, so 24 points to eight. Hunduza with a second try. Kent comes from deep and he sets off after. He looks like he's going to lamp somebody and that's the pressure there. Pritchard had three PNG players bearing down on him. It's good kick chase there from Papua New Guinea from the restart. It was a good length. It was chaseable. It's very unfortunate for Pritchard. I mean, it's, he's, he's been instrumental coming off the bench. Ball carrying, tackling. Just unfortunately catching, letting him down on that one. It seems Papua New Guinea have decided to scrum. As you guys know, a knock-on into touch. You can either take the scrum or the line out. They've gone with the scrum, which is interesting considering they're one man down and they've been under pressure all day. Here we go then. What can Papua New Guinea do? The backs are set. They're fairly shallow. The push comes in from Zimbabwe. Kautu fumbles it. There's a knock-on. There's an advantage. O'Neill sends it wide. Here's the try scorer. His fullback was looping round. Didn't see him. Throws it forward. And it's going to stop there on the halfway there. But it may not have been the right decision. But their line-out hasn't been going too well either. So the lesser of two evils, I suppose, for Papua New Guinea. You've got it 100%, Grant. The line-out hasn't been functioning. The scrum is struggling. And to put salt in the wound, we've got one man on the bench who's the, the huge lock forward, Lewis Madulula. So we're going to have to see what's going to happen with the set piece now as Papua New Guinea look to scrum. They'll be needing a score soon, 60-minute mark. This time they get it back quickly. That's better for PNG. Now they're on the front foot. That's good intent. We haven't seen much of this big man, Cattell. Unfortunately, the forwards are still coming around the corner from that scrum. Here they finally come. It's the skipper, Kinney. Up to Garrison. And it's a dog fight now there, and that's been snaffled off the floor. Good work from the big number eight, Ndlovu. Taffy Chittaquindo comes away with it and sees not only some black shirts, but his own player shirts in front of him, scampering around looking for somewhere to go. And 
went behind his own plough, I think. Giving away a penalty. So, oh, I love seeing these PNG backs on the front foot just tearing into this ball. They've run with a little more purpose in the midfield sometimes than Zimbabwe. They're going to have a shot. This is a surprise. It's going to be Kent. 16 points down, Grant. I'm assuming they're thinking... They get the three now. They score two converted tries. They go one point ahead. It's going to be a huge fight back if they do do it. Seems like they've given it to Kent. Probably got a bit more distance on the left boot, it seems. We often see Grant there, the kicker lining the ball up, the, the long-range kicker, the likes of Francois Stein whereas the more accurate kickers keep the ball a bit more upright. Looks good. Off the post and over. And John Kent has nailed it. The third left footer we've seen in action today. It's all lefties today here at Football Club. Off the posts, and now they trail by only 13 points. As you say, they're within striking distance. Just the one try so far. They haven't really looked like scoring a try yet, or for the last 20 minutes or so. They look good in the first 20, and that's mainly because they're set piece on their own ball. They've been struggling to win their own ball. <laughs> Good work from Christopher Namami. He gets manhandled off the ground there. Ball and all gets taken in the air. The strength there. That was some awesome. That was an awesome kickoff, Grant. We see big reserve front ranker Lawrence Clemerson getting right underneath the ball. So great work from him too. Can PNG get this ball back? Zimbabwe look fired up as they go into the scrums. A lot of chat. And PNG just sucking in the big ones. Hooker's foot is up very early. It can be hard to get those ones back with all that pressure. Kautu, good straight, coming back against the grain. James Lamar is the try scorer. Sets a target in midfield. Here's Kent. Someone needs to go forward here. And finally, it's Cattell. He's had three or four straight hard runs that have made good front football for PNG every time. But their big boys are struggling to get to those breakdowns and hit the targets that Cattell is setting. It'll be a... Another PNG scrum, this time just inside the Zim half. Look at this huge man who's on the field, Kempi. Wesley Thomas, the tight head. Wesley Thomas coming on, yeah. Grant, I was just uh, having a good look at Ndlovo. The man hasn't stopped working, himself and Teddy. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a club sheet where the where the players are playing their club rugby. But there's definitely players out here putting up their hand and great job from the Hong Kong Rugby Union giving these men a chance to showcase their skills. 17 minutes left. 13 points the difference. I'm not going to write off Papua New Guinea yet. They've been a team full of surprises in this series. They come and play their style of rugby, regardless. They don't get to play a lot of test matches, averaging just three a year for the last 10 years. And now they've had three within 10 days, nine days, and that can only be good. They'll be going home with some great experiences, some good memories, and maybe some duty-free. Backs are deep and wide. Kent tucked in the pocket behind Kotu. It's scruffy, though. Teddy gets all over him. Makes a real nuisance of himself. Toes it forward. Kent's got to go back. He's got Charteris on him. This is Cattell. Puts his head down. That's what he does. They've got to get their players behind the ball now.
PNG still with a man in the bin as J. Day Garrison takes it to the 10. Skipper Kenny takes the ball. That's better from PNG. Up to the halfway now. Front foot ball. Here comes Kent. Can he put someone in space? Takes everybody on. Gives it up to Nomani. They need to finish this off to stay in this game. Both benches are animated, shouting instructions out to their players. PNG realising this is a moment. They have to finish this off now. Zimbabwe is realigned. They go wide. There is a numbers overlap. Kenny, a hand in the way there. And it didn't go forward, so play on. Into the hands of Garrison. He's going to straighten up. Puts on a bit of footwork. Defend. Will he straighten up ever? He gets tracked and taken around the ankles in Denford. Did he knock it on there on the floor? No, he didn't. Skipper there has flopped on it and saved the day. And now Zimbabwe, have they got the stomach to go 80 metres? Well, under it is Kalagai. Kent's back. He's been absolutely everywhere, this young man. Zimbabwe look like they've pilfered this one. Yes, they have. And it's too late. As the arriving players come, they go quickly. They're trying to punish PNG here. Look at the Oy. big hit. And then he flops on him. Teddy gets squashed by the big replacement. Absolutely flattened like a pancake. But he's up as Teddy. This is an insane passage of play here as both teams try to take advantage of the thinned out defensive lines. Here goes Titch. The PNG defense has been tireless. Even when they look thin, they manage to find another leg, grow another arm. Now they look thin on that far side. Rose gives it up. This is a punishing passage of play. Still it goes on. They just don't want it to end. Here goes witness Mendiza. He has to go back and get this. This is Clemmy Clemenson. And what a, an unbelievable... Oh, Teddy won't stop. He Teddy. keeps going. <laughs> Teddy's away. He's got O'Neill outside him. And look at that. Can he be caught? No. Rian O'Neill's going to finish that off. And that's a quite simply unbelievable passage of play of about three minutes in this heat. And hats off to both sides. But it's Zimbabwe who put yet another try on the scoreboard. I tell you what, Grant... Teddy will be getting words from the front rankers in the change room. He's tapped and goed three balls. We see big Clemmy Clemenson walking over to him, telling him to please stop this now. <laughs> Teddy praising the tempo. He's had an absolute storming game. We saw him clear the kick, make the tackle, take the steal, then tap the ball, take it wide. Some of his own players will be trying to trip him up now. He's had a stormer himself and Glovo, the number eight for Zimbabwe. Not to mention he got absolutely flattened. Oh, twice so far, Grant. By Wesley Thomas, the replacement. <laughs> Nailed him with a massive shoulder and then just flopped down on him in a WWE style move. Couldn't resist. But little Teddy, well, he's, he's a tough character. And he was in that movement a number of times. The kick is over. Zimbabwe 31, Papua New Guinea 11. And that now looks perhaps unassailable with 12 minutes to go. And I think this crowd would love to see PNG get some more points on the board. They've certainly put in enough effort. And they're probably worth more than just the one try they've scored so far. They won't stop trying. Batted back by Chamala. Solid tackle from Christopher Namani. Rose, he's been tireless, this big flanker. Teddy clears it. Here's O'Neill, the try scorer. Here's our man, the try scorer, also Stephen Hunduza. And they hold it up, come back. 
Stress testing this defence now. They know it works, this defence. They know what they've got to get through. And the earlier suspicion they were trying to be more structured, well, that's gone out the window. It's all gloves are off now. Here's Richard Aitzi, the fly half. He hasn't really controlled this game for Papua New Guinea. Absolutely players all across the field now. Stolen by Zimbabwe on the 10 metre now. There's no one at home at the back. Teddy looks up, sees that. Gives it to Rose. He fires out an awful pass to Mendiza. Pick and go from Modudula. Just back from the naughty chair. And turned over again. Hunduza gives up to Clemmy Clemenson. And again, this is the beginning of another crazy passage of play. Looks like Denford, the skipper there, up to the 10 metre line now. Look at Teddy. He's done. Look at his eyes. Teddy's away again. Up over the halfway, looking for support. Rose is there. Goes back on Oi. the inside. The shoulder of Vagi was not strong enough as the big man Rose effortlessly swatted him a bye for a sixth try for Zimbabwe. And claps all around the crowd is loving this rugby grunt, Kim. There we see Teddy again. He must be the fittest man in Hong Kong. Forget about on the field, Grant. He puts Rose through the gap. Rose goes off the right foot through the fullback and he's under the poles. But the game has been played in an unbelievable spirit. Both teams, two days left in Hong Kong, have decided, you know what? We've had enough. We're going to throw it around and have some fun. And it's looking incredible. Great game to watch. And we can see that because the crowd's starting to fill up. Sportsman's pub's looking full. And we're seeing some great skills, great rugby. And especially from that man, we've mentioned him a lot today, Teddy. He's made a few breaks. He's been smashed about three or four times. The kick's over, adds the extra two. 38-11, nine minutes to go, Grant. Rian O'Neill comes off with the skipper, Denford, Mutanga, Mangera. They both had good games for Zimbabwe. Well led by the skipper. Good feisty running from Rian O'Neill. Teddy, tedious Zandi Wandera. He is our man of the match so far. I can't see anyone putting their hand up now. He'll be winning a Ford Fiesta. He's gone deep this time to Charteris again. He's done well this time. Spins out of it. And they try and scrag him to the sideline, but he just stays in. And witness Mendiza. He's had a good impact since he's come on. This huge lock. More subs now. Uh, rolling through all the bench now, Grant. Nine minutes to go. Last couple of days. There'll be some tired, tired bodies out there. Teddy's coming off. He's done his 70 minutes. 72 minutes. He's had a blinder, hasn't he? He's getting a massive round of applause from his bench as he goes over and low fives them all. He's been the difference here. And on in his place comes Lungili Chuma. He gets eight minutes. Zimbabwe now with the job of rebuilding Zimbabwe rugby after being relegated from the Africa Cup this year. They'll have to get themselves back up into the top tier, make a, if they're gonna make a pitch for the 2019 World Cup. And here they come now. Titch now, Tumbuera, the fullback's been joining the line all day. Not many clean breaks though, because this PNG defense has been very sticky. Bit of a blowout now, but it's been very solid all day. Banging off the right foot now. Here goes the replacement, Chuma. 
It's been knocked forward. It's been knocked back, sorry. Look at the hard running here by this man. Look at him go to the halfway now. It's replacement Garrison. He's been fantastic since he came on as well. He's gone 50 metres there and couldn't link up with anyone. That's what we see in the last 10 minutes here, Grant. You're not going to see that, that chase line coming up all linked in with loud voices. One man makes a break. He goes through. Another man turns it over and he goes through and it's back and forth. Have the likes of Clemmy Clemenson will just stand in the midfield watching this happen and get ready to scrum, which he's about to do right now. The skill is knowing where the next scrum will take place, right? You 100%. <laughs> that is, Fat if man's you, alley. If you can read that, <laughs> you've got half the battle won. <laughs> Pretty much brand new front rows for both sides, and it's a even scrum there. Here they come again, PNG. They won't stop trying. This is Lumaris, the try scorer. But they're out on the far side. Patrick Quark's got the flag up. And there's only about five minutes remaining. And, well, almost a little bit surprising that the pace they've kept up for this game, we thought it might die off, but it hasn't. Earlier in this half, Zimbabwe looked like they were taking a more structured approach, a more sensible approach, but they gave up on that once they saw how good this defence was. Weren't able to go through the middle. They've resorted to just throwing it around, and it's paid dividends in the end. Three good tries in the last 15 minutes, and here they go now, just as I say it. Well, they're rolling more off a line out. They've gone 20 metres. Referee might have his arm out. This is an incredible maul here. They've gone 30 metres. It's still going forward. The structure's there. This is beautiful stuff. And finally it's on the ground. Chuma, the replacement, gives it to Rose to try score it. Puts in a desperate fend on Modadula. And looks like it may have been turned over. No, there it is for Chuma. Oh, there's a big hit coming in from Bruno Tuaki. And just as I said, they'd abandoned the structured approach. They've gone back to it now. They've gone 50 metres from a line-out. And eventually Boy. they win the penalty. And that would set a prop forwards hard on fire, Grant Kemp. We're going to have to have another look at that one, Grant. It looked like he was the first man over the ball. Tim Baker ruling that he hasn't released the the tackled player before he's had a go at the ball we saw the Papua New Guinea the man say sorry but it looks like Patrick Quack's 10 meters out he's got his flag up and I can almost guarantee you they'll be going for that rolling mall again it's been very very successful so far a lot of hands on knees for PNG as they suck it in after that big 50 meter effort and here they go Zimbabwe can they get the wedge sorted? They're struggling to get any shape. And that is really a pig's dinner there. And they'll have a scrum. Not able to repeat the success of that earlier. Mega Mall. Two and a half minutes remaining. I'm sure the forwards would love to finish this, stamping something on the game. They haven't been able to sort of break through the defensive line around the short channels. Chuma with the ball. But with no blind at all, Rose has gone around there with about two inches of space and coughed it up to Motadula now who squeezes it between the legs PNG it's hard to get out of that corner it's like gravity pulls you back in but they do manage to get the kick away and it'll be a Zim line out just inside the Papua New Guinea 22 he's done well there Grant with a little angle uh, I thought we were going to see them run we've got about a minute and a half to go 20 or so points down. 
Instead, I think we're going to see a rolling mall should they win it, which they do. Rose goes up, brings it down. This time they've got some shape. But <laughs> Tim Baker disagrees with me. Truck and trailer, was it? Yeah, you see all Papua New Guinea stand off there. They haven't been too successful with hitting it. So what you do is you stand off and hopefully Zimbabwe pass the ball and then we have what we call an accidental obstruction, which gives a scrum to Papua New Guinea. I suspect they're going to run here, Grant. Number 10 is looking nice and flat on the line. We've got the whole, all the backs, including the full back. We've got Kent inside the number 10. So I expect some, some sort of plan move off the scrum here. Some last-minute madness from Papua New Guinea to close out this match, perhaps. They've got to win the scrum first. They do that. Kautu, Rose goes oh, through the gap, fantastic. and that's worked. All the drill work paid off, but Charteris comes across from that scrum and does the job of the flanker and nails him. It's not over, though, as time clicks over on the clock. Zimbabwe equally as desperate not to let this get out of hand, but then a rather mindless kick through, giving Zimbabwe a chance, and that's a beautiful tackle around the legs from Lumaris. And that's out. And the insanity has been brought to an end by Tim Baker. A fantastic match of rugby here at Football Club. Zimbabwe... World rank 37 have beaten PNG 38 points to 11 with six brilliant tries. One to PNG to take out the bronze medal in this Cup of Nations. Grant Kemp, your reflections on this match here? A great game, Grant. Um, we saw both teams giving it everything, as you said, for the bronze medal. But what's more important is that both teams will take away a lot of experiences. We need teams to be playing rugby in order to improve Grant. And so great job, great tournament for both these teams. They'll be relaxed. They'll be having fun on the sidelines as we prepare for the big game, Russia, Hong Kong, 5 o'clock. Thanks for joining us for this bronze medal match. It's Zimbabwe convincingly that do take the bronze over Papua New Guinea in the 2016 Regal Hotels Cup of Nations. Thank you for joining us here at Hong Kong Football Club. Join us at 5 p.m. if you're going to stay with us an hour from now for the one versus two match, Hong Kong versus Russia. Until then, thank you.